Welcome back. In the prior videos, we prepared our depreciation schedule for our building using straight line, and we did it again using units of production. Now we're going to talk about what happens if we have some sort of a change to our depreciation calculation. In this case, on 7120, which is one year after we bought the building, we made an improvement to the building for 40,000. So we have increased the book value by 40,000. Our improvement has a salvage value of zero, so we haven't changed the salvage value, and it does not extend the useful life for units of production, so we don't have a change in our denominator. So the new book value of the building is the old, so this is the new book value at the beginning of year two. So it's going to be the old book value, which was 125,000, plus the cost of the improvement. So our new book value is going to be $129,000. And that's going to be true, we should probably put this here under straight line. And that's going to be true whether we're talking about straight line or units of production. Just whatever the beginning book value is at the beginning of year two when we made this improvement. And we're going to add in the amount of um, the improvement. So now we have to calculate what's our new uh, d annual depreciation. Okay, so under straight line, it's going to be the new book value minus our salvage value, which was 25,000. And we're going to want that to be its own formula divided by the remaining useful life. So our original straight line useful life was five years, but we've already used the building for a year. So our remaining useful life on the first day of year two is four years. So with our improvement of $4,000, our new annual straight line depreciation will be $26,000. Going over to units of production, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to have our cost, which is our beginning book value, minus our salvage value of 25,000, divided by our remaining useful life. Our original useful life was 250,000 units of production. We've already produced 50,000 of those. So our remaining useful life is 250,000 minus 50,000 or 200,000 units. And our new depreciation rate is going to be 52 cents a unit. Okay, so by changing one of the factors, we change our rate of depreciation. We could have changed the useful life. We could have changed our estimate of salvage value and we would have to start over the calculation of depreciation. But the important thing to remember is when we recalculate our depreciation, it is prospective only. We can't go back and change what we've already booked last year. All we can do is look forward. So we have to adjust the cost to be the beginning book value. And the salvage value is still the salvage value unless that's what we've changed. And the denominator of the useful life becomes the remaining useful life. All that's left going forward. Okay. Um, oh, I put them both on the same line, but that's okay. Um, so going down then, I can start updating my two schedules. So I'm going to start with my, well, I'm going to start with year two, first of all, because year one won't change. And in fact, why don't we go ahead and put that in here. Oops. Paste. And we'll go up here. Okay. So before we made the change, before we made the improvement, we had already booked one year of depreciation. That does not change. That stays exactly where it is. Okay. Special values. Okay, there we go. 
All right, but now we're going to start with our new depreciation schedule. So first of all, we said, let me go up here a little bit so you can see it. Our new beginning book value is going to be 129,000. Remember, before on the old depreciation schedule, our beginning book value at the beginning of year two was 125,000. But because we've made that $4,000 improvement, now our beginning book value is 129,000. Our annual depreciation is now $26,000 a year. So our ending book value is going to be beginning book value minus our annual depreciation. All right, so our new ending book value is 103,000. So I'm gonna carry forward my book value. I'm gonna put in my 26,000. And at the end of year three, my book ending book value is 77,000. I'll carry that down to my beginning book value for year four, enter my annual depreciation of 26,000, and do the same thing for year five. When I get to the end, my ending book value at the end of the five years is still the $25,000 salvage value. Okay. I'm going to do the same in the same video for units of production. And we are going to start off with 129,000. In year two, we, uh, we produced 40,000 units. So I'm going to multiply that by my new rate of $52,000 a unit for annual depreciation of 20,800. Calculate my ending book value. All right, there we go, paste. Okay, I'm gonna carry down my ending book value from the end of year two. That will be my beginning book value for year three. In year three, we calculated 60, or we produced 65,000 units times our rate of 52, our new rate of 52 cents a unit. So our annual depreciation is 33,800. I'm gonna carry down my book value to the beginning of year four, where we produced 45,000 units times the 52 cents a unit is $23,400 annual depreciation. Ending book value of 51,000, which becomes my beginning book value for year five. In year five, we, gener uh, we produced 50,000 units times our rate of 52 cents per unit annual depreciation of $26,000 and an ending book value of $25,000, which matches our salvage value. That's how we manage a uh, change in estimate or if we make an improvement and change the overall cost of the asset. All right, I'll see you next time.